a middle schooler. If this was his reaction to middle school homework, I can't imagine what his reaction to high school homework would be. With the weight of so much homework bearing down on students, there has to be repercussions. These consequences come in two forms, physical strain and mental strain. Students' physical and mental health are being harmed. According to the Washington Post, some effects of excessive homework are stress, headaches, exhaustion, sleep deprivation, weight loss, and stomach problems, just to name a few. These issues all go hand in hand, and many times one leads to another. Numerous people, including myself, suffer from several of these symptoms, one of the most problematic being sleep deprivation. Teenagers should get anywhere from 8 to 10 hours of sleep every night, and many only get at most 8.5, according to the National Sleep Foundation. When a student doesn't get a sufficient amount of homework, it limits their ability to learn. So by staying up late to complete homework, therefore getting less sleep, it makes learning the next day for them even more difficult. And the amount of sleep a student gets correlates directly with their stress levels. Researchers at the Stanford Graduate School of Education did a survey of 4,000 students from 10 high-performing high schools in California. 56% of these students said that homework was their primary stressor, and a vast majority of those surveyed said that their homework load led to sleep deprivation. I'm sure we all know or knew that one kid who would constantly fall asleep during lecture and class, now it's true, maybe he or she stayed up playing video games or watching Netflix. But what about that student who can't function because they were up doing homework? These students are paying the price for that homework, and part of that price is a mental burden. With less time for family, friends, and just socializing in general, students are not meeting their developmental needs or cultivating other critical life skills at the researchers at Stanford. Students in their study were also more likely to drop extracurricular activities, not see their friends and family, and not pursue the hobbies they enjoy. Because in the time it should be spent doing this, it was spent doing homework. I can tell you that trying to juggle between school and homework, along with after school activities and two jobs, is like trying to juggle swords that are on fire and have no handles. <laughs> Needless to say, it's difficult. But just because it's difficult doesn't mean there aren't some solutions to this epidemic plaguing students today. When you think of some of these solutions, I'm sure many things come to mind. So let's look at what parents, students, and teachers can do to help. To start, what can parents do to help? According to Brain Balance Achievement Center, one thing that parents can do to help reduce the amount of time their student spends on homework is to have a quiet and clean place solely dedicated to doing that homework. This should be a place with no distractions so the student can really buckle down and focus on their work, thus reducing the amount of time they spend on it. Another thing that parents can do to help is to implement a homework schedule. This is an amount of time set aside during the day for the student to work on their homework. It makes sure that nothing else is planned during this period so as to distract the student or take them away from doing their homework, thus allowing them to get it done faster. Additionally, parents can help their child with their homework. Students spend a lot more time on their homework when they don't understand it, and it can cause them to become extremely discouraged and frustrated. But by getting homework help from a parent, or even finding a tutor to help them, it can be a great way to make sure they don't spend too much time on their homework. Finally, parents need to be proactive and have a frank discussion with their child's teacher if they feel the homework load is becoming excessive. Now that we know what parents can do to help, let's look at what students themselves can do to help. According to ZenHabits.org, one thing students can do to reduce the amount of time they spend on homework is to reduce the amount of time they spend on social media. I realize that this is a revolutionary idea, but the distraction of Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and whatever other websites is not far away. Computers are being used as online textbooks and for doing internet research, which allows for easy access to these distracting sites, not to mention the effect that cell phones and other personal devices have. One way to help with this social media problem is to budget time into a homework schedule to be on social media. This means that while you're doing your homework, you take small breaks here and there to allow for the internet. Another thing you can do to help with this social media problem is to set aside a certain amount of time during the day to be on social media. Say, for instance, I'm only going to be on Facebook today from 5 until 6. This makes sure that you stick to these time restraints and that you don't get sucked into that never-ending portal that is social media. Another thing students can do to reduce the amount of time they spend on homework is to stop procrastinating. 
Trust me when I say this is a big issue. I put the pro in procrastination. By pushing all my homework to the side and saying, oh, I'll do it later, or I'll have time later, it causes it to all add up. So in the end, when you come around to doing it, you're going to spend twice as much time on it. By doing your homework when it's assigned and not pushing it off to the side, it can make sure that you don't spend too much time doing it. Now that we know what parents and students can do to help, let's look at what teachers can do to help. One thing teachers can do to make sure their students don't spend too much time doing homework is to make sure that the homework they give has relevance. This means assigning beneficial homework and not busy work. The researchers at Stanford found that sometimes excessive amounts of homework can diminish its effectiveness and cause it to be counterproductive. The leader of the research team, Denise Pope, says that homework given should have a purpose and a benefit and be designed to cultivate learning and development. Now it is hard to define the difference between beneficial homework and busy work, especially when teachers are under more pressure than ever to educate students. But being able to define this difference and making sure that, that teachers are giving beneficial homework can be a great way to make sure students don't spend too much time on it. Another thing teachers can do to help is to keep in mind the amount of classes students are taking. Assigning homework is a good thing, even I'll admit. But when one teacher assigns an hour-long assignment, and another teacher assigns an hour-and-a-half-long assignment, and yet another teacher assigns an hour-long assignment, it all starts to add up. By keeping in mind the amount of classes students are taking and assigning an appropriate amount of homework, it can make sure that students don't become overburdened. These seemingly minute things can help in monumental proportions. All it takes is a little dedication from parents, students, and teachers. In conclusion, homework has become a serious burden to young students. They say that what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, but when is enough homework simply too much? The excessive amount of it is bearing down on students' physical and mental health, which has negative effects. With the right help, motivation, and action, the strain can be alleviated. If someone you know is struggling with homework, be sure to help him or her out, whether it's with homework help, finding a tutor, or simply helping them stay on task. Anything you do can really help a high schooler struggling with their homework. Now, please excuse me. I have homework to do. Words. Words have always swirled around me like snowflakes. Each one's delicate and different. Each one melts in my hands. From the time I was really little, words were like sweet, liquid gifts, and I drank them like lemonade. Every single word that my parents spoke to me and about me, I kept and remembered. By the time I was two, all of my memories.